Hi there, this is Mark Haddad here again. In this lecture, I have to show you what you can do from the USG router. So we have the USG router now in place of the Mikrotik router, and it has some functionality which we can use it. Something to think is like uh, the firewall. That's uh, one of the main things that uh, we can use. But uh, of course, the main one is the DPI. So I have divided uh, this uh, to be into two videos. One video, I will show you about the uh, firewall and this is going to be in this lecture and another one is going to be about the dpi which is going to be in the upcoming lecture so as you can see here we have a lab of four points but before i start doing those points let me just explain to you what we need to do in this lab so now we have this router is a usg router it's already installed providing the internet and we have seen that everything is working perfectly now one of the functionality that we can use this router for is the firewall. It has a firewall inside of it. And this firewall is somehow a nice one. So you can use it for, for example, if you want to do some firewalling protection for your network. So what I'm going to do in this lab is that I have here on this PC an IP of 192.1.7, I guess. And this router has an IP of 192.1.1. So I want that all the LAN users, of which are over here, to uh, not be able to ping the IP address of this router. So if they try to ping the IP address of this router, this is not going to work. That's one of the firewall rules that I want to do. But also, I just want to make another firewall rule, is that anyone who is trying to ping, for example, I choose one web server, which is uh, over here on the internet. So I choose one IP address and I say, if anyone wants to ping that IP address, so uh, we go to the internet, so it's passing via the router, also it's not possible. So those two things, you can do them, two rules on the firewall, which is on the USG. And that's what I'm going to do in this lab. I just want to show you that uh, this firewall is very nice to make it and you can create the rules and you will see after you create the rules that uh, the ping can be stopped of course i'm just showing you about the ping but you can do more than that you can say from this ip to this ip going on the protocol for example tcp or udp so that's something also you can do it on the firewall so once we go to the firewall i will show you more details about that now let's go back to the points and start doing them point number one make a ping from your pc to 192.168.1.1 and keep it open so let's put the picture here and uh, I'll open here the command prompt from uh, my Windows PC. And if I say here IP config, we will see that the IP on this PC is 192.168.1.7. So this is provided from the USG router. If I try to ping to 192.168.1.1, which is the router, the USG router, and I make it extended, I keep it open, then you can see that the ping is working. So now what I need to do is to protect my router. I don't want anyone to just ping my route because this is type of uh, we can call it the uh, denial of service attack so someone is pinging your router all the time from different pcs and different uh, end devices then your router is very busy answering all those ping and then at the end his uh, memory and the cpu becomes very high so i really want to protect that that do not allow anyone to ping uh, my router okay point number one is done point number two make the configuration needed on the firewall so the pc cannot ping the usg ip address anymore and we will have to check if the ping has, has been stopped. So you can see that the ping is still ongoing. Now let's go to the controller. Now from the controller over here, what you need to do is uh, you have to go over here to the settings. And from here you have this one, routing and firewall. And this is enabled because we have the USG. Now, what you can do on the routing at firewall, you can create static routes. You can see, you can just say create a route to go to this uh, network, go to from this IP address, for example. You can go here precise the next hop. So that's uh, on the routing. Okay, now you can see it supports only the static route. So if you want, for example, OSPF or one trip, that's not possible on this router because this router is really a uh, router which uh, you will use it on, as I said, on uh, small uh, businesses. So uh, that's uh, the static route. Now we have to work on the firewall. And uh, here on the firewall, you will see when in, when out, when local, LAN in, LAN out, LAN local, guest in, guest out, guest local. So what does it mean here? This means that uh, in this case, when you say, for example, WAN out, that means any uh, traffic which is leaving the WAN interface going to uh, to the outside world. That's for example. Now, what is the important for us is to work on the LAN. So we have LAN in, LAN out, and LAN local. 
Now, if we want to stop the ping to the router, so that means anything coming to the router is not going via the router to uh, the uh, internet. So anything going to the router, for example, stopping the ping because the ping is going to the router, that's something we have to work on the LAN local. But uh, now if we go to the LAN local, you will see there are no any predefined rules. But if we look for the LAN out, for example, you can see that there is a predefined rule. Those rules, you cannot delete them. You can see it's not possible to delete them. Those are rules that uh, the Ubiquiti have uh, put them on the firewall and you cannot delete them. What you can do, you can create the rule and you can say, I want to put it before on, or I want to put it after the predefined rule. But now because we are going to work on the ping, which is going to the router. So the traffic is going to the router, to the interface of the router. So we have to go to the LAN local. And here I have to create a new rule. And on this rule, we have to put a name, let's say, block ping to the router, to R1, to make it easy. Okay, block ping to R1. And now, we want this rule to be enabled. Yes, it's on. Rule applied, is it before predefined or after predefined rules? Because there are no predefined rules here, so that's not a problem. So, but I will leave it before. And what this rule has to do, it has to drop. So it has to drop the packet you can, because now the ping is going. I want to drop the ping. And they say you want to drop the ping on which protocol? You want it to be on all or that means everything or on TCP. And there here you have to precise the port of the TCP or you want it on UDP or TCP and UDP and so ever. So here the ping is an ICMP packet. So I have to choose ICMP. And here you have uh, options. You have uh, many ICMP uh, packets that you can use, as you can see here. The one that we uh, are using now is the echo request. That's what the ping is. Echo request going to the router. When the router answers back, it's called echo reply. But for now, I would just say any. So anything which is ICMP, I want to block it. Okay. Now we go to here. If you want to do logging, you can just enable this one. The states, of course, I'm not going to go through those details because there is a course from Ubiquiti we speak about routing. And uh, there you can know what is the new established and valid and related. So in this case, I leave this as default. And uh, now the source from where it is coming. So I will say coming from anywhere. So I just leave it as it is. And here it's saying going to where. Now I will say it's going to the IP 192.168.1.1. So if we make a review what we have done, I'm saying that I want to create this rule, which is enable. And uh, it has to drop the ICMP packet, which is coming from any device. And my computer is one of these devices. So here I will leave it sourced from coming from anywhere and going to the IP 192.168.1.1, which is the destination. That's the IP of the router. And here I will have to say save. And once I do that, this rule has been created. And now, of course, the device, if we go to device, to uh, this router, it has to be provisioned because we applied this configuration on the USG router, so it's provisioning. And let's have a look now to the ping. So uh, as you can see, the ping is still working because this has not been applied to the router. But in a moment, we shall see that uh, the ping has to stop. And you can see it's still now working. Let's uh, make another refresh. Still provisioning, and here we go. Now it is request timed out. Why it is request timeout? Because now the ping is coming from my PC to the router, to the LAN interface. And then here you say, oh, you're coming from anywhere. Yeah. Where are you going? I'm going to the router, which is 192.168.1.1. And I have a rule saying that to stop it, then boop, it will block it. You can see it's now blocking any ping coming to the router. And that's uh, what the firewall can do for you. So now if uh, we refresh again, it should be now, yeah, it is now connected. But it doesn't mean that the, there is no more internet. So it's, uh, the internet's still working. You can see I can ping google.com from my PC. It's working. So I just stopped the ping to the router itself. Point number two is done. Point number three, make an extended ping from your PC to miseticonsult.com website. So let's see now, this is a, a, uh, my website, which is miseticonsult.com. Dot com. So this ping is working. So now the ping is not going to the router, it's going 
we are the router to this web server which is on the internet so if you have to think of it now the ping is going this way it's flowing from this pc and it will go to the router and then from the router it has to go to the server of miset.consult.com and it is replying to the pc so now before i made the, the uh, rule to block anything coming to the router here and i used landlocker and now i need to stop the ping going to this web server which is miset.consult.com so how to do that that's something we have to use now the lan in so if we go again to the controller and from here i go to settings and from here we go to routing and firewall and i go to the firewall so what we have done now is uh, we have worked on the uh, LAN local and this has stopped the ping to the router. Now to stop the ping to a server which needs the traffic to go from the, the PC to the router to, to go to the internet, that's something we have to work on LAN in. And on the LAN in, this here, you will have to create a rule. So I'll create here a rule, but first let me just uh, open the ping. Let's uh, make again the ping and then minus T. And you can see that the ping is working. It's reaching mict-consult.com and coming back. And the ping is working without any problem. Now, if we go here and let's do, for example, a block ping m-a-i-c-t consult. Okay, we just give it a name. Now, where we have to put it, we have to put it before the predefined rule, because here there are predefined rules. So it's always recommended that you put your rules before. Why before? Because normally the rules go in sequence. So when the packet comes, it checks the first rule. If it doesn't match, it goes to the second rule. If it doesn't match, it goes to the third rule and keep going like this. So if you put it first, then in case it match, then it will be applied and then it doesn't go to the second rule anymore. That's why it's very important you put it on the first place okay so we have to drop and drop what icmp and uh, here i will leave everything to be any from where the source is from anywhere and destination here what you can say you can put the ip address of this uh, web server so you just select on ip address and let's see what is the ip address of the server 192.185.21.177 so let's put it 192 dot one eight five dot twenty one dot one seven seven dot twenty one dot one seven seven so this is the destination so again if we read it now we are saying that any traffic going via the router to that server drop it if it's icmp which is ping and uh, this is the ip of uh, the server which is the destination and then i will say here save so now if we go to the devices you can see before I go to the devices, look, it has been created before the predefined one. Okay, because the predefined one, it uh, accepts uh, everything, you can see. So we put it there. If it's pink, then it will stop the, the pink. And then it doesn't go to the second uh, rule. And you can see the rule index is very important. It is 2000, it's before 6001. Now we go to the devices. And from here, we check this one. It should be provisioning now. Yes. And let's check the ping. And here we go. We see that uh, this ping has uh, already stopped. So the ping to miset-consult.com has been stopped. And uh, that's because we have applied uh, this firewall rule. And uh, that means that this router should be now already connected. So you can see. Now, if you want to go to uh, miset, so... Uh, if we go to the browser and we go to the website because we just stopped the ping but we didn't stop everything so we just go to the website and uh, you can see it should work because this is uh, working on uh, http and this is port 80 which is uh, tcp port 80 which is not an icmp and you can see that the website is open without any problem so what we have done we just stopped anyone to ping to that Web server. Of course, I'm just showing you examples, so 
you can do your own rules for the, and you decide which uh, uh, IPs you want to block uh, coming from which source to going to which uh, destination. But I'm just giving you the basic idea how you can apply the firewall. Port number three is done. Port number four also, we have made the configuration and uh, we show that the ping has been stopped and uh, it's also done. Now, before I finish uh, this uh, lab, I just want to show you something that uh, if you go again to the settings here, there is a nice feature now that Ubiquiti is putting it on a beta version, which is the threat management. On threat management, what you can do, you can enable IDS or you can enable IPS. So if you enable IDS, that's what we call it intrusion detection system. What does it mean here? This has some signatures inside of it. And uh, if we see some uh, um, traffic, which is uh, not normal, then he compared it to his signature. And if you see that it's type of attack, he will detect it, but he will not take any action to it. So you would be only notified. That's what IDS is. While IPS is called intrusion prevention system. So again, he will have some database signatures. And then if we see some attacks to the router, then he will check that it is uh, compared to his signature. He knows that it's an attack. Then he will prevent it. So he will take an action. So that's the difference between IDS and IPS. IDS, it only detect. IPS, it will detect it, but also it will stop it. So by default, this is uh, disabled. And uh, of course, this is out of scope of this course to speak about that. But I just wanted to show you that this is it's on already beta. That means it should be somehow coming um, very soon. So to be included with the settings of this USG router. But if you enable it, here they put for you some uh, warning, like, uh, for example, here, they're saying, the unified intrusion prevention system will protect your network from attacks and malicious activity. It will block and shut down connection that could compromise your security. So that's what the IPS, that is what they're saying here on IPS. Now, they're saying, warning, enabling threat, man threat management will affect the unified security gateway 3P maximum throughput 85 megabits. So it really affects your bandwidth. So if you want to enable it, be careful that this will affect your bandwidth. And also it's saying that enabling this will disable hardware offload. So yeah, if you really want it, use it, but use it with caution. Know what you are doing. And, and if you know that uh, 85 megabits will be more than enough for the network, so you can enable that one. Yeah, this is what I wanted to show you about uh, what you can do on the uh, USG router, the firewall. And also we know that you can do the uh, routing using the uh, static route. And uh, on the firewall, you have seen that uh, there are many different ways to create uh, the rules. And uh, you have to decide based on where to where it's going. So it's going to the router or it's going via the router or it's going from the router to the outside or from the router to the inside or yeah, there are different uh, ways to make uh, the rules. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.